A metallic sphere-like UFO was recorded next to an airport in Florida. In 1967, Joseph Ferrier captured these images in a wooded area over New York. He described the object as a perfectly silent cigar-shaped craft that, quote, crept up on him. Almost as if it crept up on me. One minute it was not there, the next minute it just was. This small, barely visible saucer-shaped object is said to have exited from the cigar, which Joseph labels a mothership. To the best of my knowledge, I don't think there are any other instances of a cigar craft being used as an airborne aircraft carrier for smaller UFOs. Certainly an interesting one-of-a-kind occurrence. They're real. Whatever that thing is, it's up there, and the photographic experts agree. I don't have much background on this sighting, only that it was recorded during a flight from Amsterdam. If it's not CG, it's a great sighting indeed. If you have any more info, please leave a comment. An object traveling at high speeds was recorded over a festival in Holland. An interesting sighting coming out of Oregon, showing over a dozen flashing objects floating over the witness's house. The video can't pick them up. They're not planes. Those are not planes. There's no way they'd be flying that close to each other. There's, there's nothing. They're not, look how fast they're going. That's not planes. Holy... They're all, like, those are not planes. Wow. No noise. With it being recorded in 2023, drones are obviously a possibility. The objects don't display any physics-defying moves that would rule out a drone. Just a slow, synchronized flight path until they are out of focus. This could quite simply be the case. But for me, the witness's reaction suggests something more unexplainable. Oh my god. Oh my god! What the f is that? Bro, I got goosebumps. What the f Sightings similar to this, with many objects appearing in one location, have been a somewhat common occurrence throughout the decades. These events happened well before personal drone use became a thing. So the possibility we are seeing something more curious here is very real. A flying saucer-shaped object was recorded high in the skies of Columbia this month. Though baffling at first glance, this sighting unfortunately in all likelihood has a simple explanation. A global ilama. 
The large inflatables are very popular around the region and are often used to celebrate festivals. The balloons have managed to fool me many a times, and it wasn't until fairly recently I actually learned what they were. They come in all sorts of strange shapes and sizes and can usually be identified by their extravagant appearance. In late 1992, the small coastal town of Gulf Breeze, Florida, became a hotbed for UFO activity. The research of UFOs. Oh, no, 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 no. We were looking over the water up in the sky, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this red light appeared. I was kind of shocked by it because I didn't see it coming from the ground or I didn't see it coming up, down, anywhere. It just appeared. Um, and someone handed me binoculars. And when I looked through the binoculars, I could see a ring of six red lights. These home videos record six separate UFO sightings. Watching them would give even the firmest skeptic time to pause. Oh, look at the firefighter! The one on the right is going down a little bit, or the one on the left is coming up. Oh! Whoa, whoa, whoa! 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 Sightings became such a common occurrence that nightly crowds would show up at the coast in hopes of experiencing an encounter. Over the months, heaps of footage of what witnesses describe as unexplainable activity was captured. We saw the red light appear, and I could see two lights to begin with that stayed for about two and a half minutes, and all of a sudden turned a brilliant white, and when it did that, it lit up, and I could see craft above it. It was kind of an oval shape. It was beautiful to me. It's the first time I've seen it. Over 100 sightings were reported in the space of 11 months. Even after 30 years, the sightings are still unexplained, with best guesses arriving at experimental military aircrafts carrying out exercises over the Gulf. If it is a military test in Gulf Breeze, it seems awfully strange to me that the military would be testing their objects or their their prototypes in people's backyards. For now, the origins of these lights are left an unexplained mystery, leaving skeptics to question and believers to prove. Yes. Eh, pues mira, te explico un poquito lo, lo que pasó ese día. Por lo regular, cuando hago la aproximación al aeropuerto del norte y ahí, y ahí está despejado, no hay nubes, me gusta grabar las montañas, me gusta grabar. Eh, el Cerro La Silla, el Cerro Las Mitras, la Sierra Madre y ese día en particular había muy poca nubosidad y, y estaba, estaba despejado casi en su totalidad y, pero justo llegando a tierra me, me di a la tarea de, de ver qué era y me di cuenta pues que era una un, pues, un, un, en este caso un ovni, ¿no? un objeto volador no identificado Great ancient civilization researcher Uncharted X showcases incredible feats of stone cutting and engineering at sites like the Great Pyramid. Much of his focus is on the impossibly precise craftsmanship on the statues at these locations. If we are to believe what mainstream experts tell us about their level of technology at the time, a lot of the work done in these places should not be possible. Some of these statues, when we get into some of the analysis, show a precision that really goes far beyond the capability of hand tools. One of the indications of, of precision is really symmetry. And if you look at the image on the left here, this is showing you the perfect symmetry of one of these giant heads that's supposedly of Ramses II that's found at Luxor. Uh, you can see that there's two Chris Dunns in this photo. He's sticking his hand on both sides of it. It's a reverse transparency overlay what you do is you take a photo that's perfectly centered on the head and then you make a copy of it you flip it on the vertical axis so it's like reversed and then you make both of those images 50 percent transparent and you overlay them that would then show you if there's any discrepancies at all between the left side and the right side and we just don't see it it's absolutely symmetrical it's perfect it's absolutely astonishing many statues in the region show the same perfectly machined features all huge cuts of stone weighing in excess of 100 tons, flawlessly chiseled to a degree that no faults can be detected even on the closest of inspections. Chris Dunn also goes on to show that, that we see the use of very consistent curves, um, the, same, the same radii, the same circumference of different tools are used in different parts of the face. This is indicative of the types of tools that are used. 
And not only that, the faces are very, very complex geometric uh, objects. This is a, an extremely complex geometric shape to try and machine out of stone. And to, su to suggest that anybody could create something as perfect as this to achieve this level of symmetry by hand is, is frankly r ridiculous. His channel has heaps of great breakdown videos like this. I've left a link in the description if you'd like to see more. And lastly, I wanted to share with you a chapter from my latest side series titled Best UFO Encounters You've Never Heard Of. The video focuses on personal UFO witness reports that haven't received mainstream attention. Basically, what the title says. If you like UFO sightings, I think you will enjoy listening to these detailed witness reports just as much. I'll leave a link in the description to the full video. This is the first time I've ever tried telling this story to anyone outside the family. I'm leaving out the time and location and some other details because I'm still scared of what might happen with it publicly. Summer before 8th grade, me and two of my friends snuck out at midnight to go walk around the neighborhood and go and see these girls on the next block. We turned a corner in our neighborhood and there was this huge, black, blimp-shaped thing in the sky. Like the pictures of the Hindenburg, but bigger than that and as close if not closer completely silent and the size of at least four to five football fields across. We stared at it entranced, asking each other over and over again if we could see it. It was like black polished gunmetal. No lights, no sound, no anything. It was just hovering there. And then I don't know what happened, but time clearly jumped. Next thing I remember is the blimp had gone. All there was left was a tiny glowing white barbell thing in the sky seemingly slowly falling to earth with wisps of smoke coming off it. Then, two brand new black trucks with silver gearboxes on the back came speeding down the street, going about 70 in a residential 25 mile per hour neighborhood. After that, I remember walking home to one of my friend's houses and going to bed. At that point, it was like 5 or 6 a.m. and the sun was coming up. We all made a promise to tell my dad in the morning because he worked for the city, but we never did. I don't know what happened later in life to one of my friends who was there. But the other was my best friend and we sort of made an unspoken pact never to talk about it. I don't know how or why we did that. As we grew up, I sort of lost touch with him too. We did reconnect over Facebook and such over the years, but it was like there was something between us neither of us wanted to talk about. Looking back on it now, there's no way we could have been the only ones to see it. It wasn't that late at night and it was over a heavily populated suburb of a major city. The idea of this has always scared me more than any sort of possible abduction scenario. That there were others, and we're all voluntarily suffering a sort of collective amnesia. I've thought about hypnosis, but that scares me too. Plus, I'm not sure if I'd trust the results. I was just a kid then, and I'm not sure if I could trust the hypnotist. What I do know, again, is that there's no way it was just the three of us who saw it. We're talking a huge thing hovering in the sky directly above hundreds of houses just after midnight on a weekend in summer. But nothing on the news. Nothing in the paper. Nothing on TV. This is a true story. This happened. And there's no way I'm the only one who remembers. No way at all. 